Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to start applying the math that you've already learned from the Math for Animators playlist, and in particular, the lesson on radians. So I have to say thanks to all of you for watching that video, because it shows me that you're taking the time to reinforce your math knowledge and refresh your skills. And I didn't really like math that much when I was going through school. I was okay at it, but it was kind of boring to me, because it was never taught with any applications in mind. And so it was only when I got into computer graphics that I had to start using it, and then it became a lot of fun. All right, And especially now with Blender, we can really do really cool stuff. So here's a very simple application that requires your knowledge of radians. And here's my little circle that I have plotted here with my x-axis and y-axis. And here's the angle of measure halfway around the circle to the pi location, the equivalent of 180 degrees. And if we went kept continuing around the circle, then we'd have 2 pi because it'd be 6.28 whatever that number would be for 2 times this value. And so there's pi and then you continue on and you have 2 pi. So to go all the way around the circle in, in degrees it's 360 degrees but with radians the angle of measure is 2 pi radians or 6.28 radians. All right. So now with this knowledge then we can really start up in the ante and we can start doing really cool stuff like we'll start with constant angular velocity and so what that means is that the it's basically you take say a particle if it's sitting on the circle and it's rotating around the circle at a constant velocity and so it's basically constantly changing the angle as it's going around the circle and that's why it's constant angular velocity. Now, so what I've done over here is I've built a little clock. That doesn't look like a clock, but it is. And I can't show you the thing in real time because when I'm recording the video, it only records at 40 frames per second instead of the 60 frames per second that it should be running at. But I'll kind of give you an idea. When I specify, well, in fact, I'll run it first and then I'll, you can kind of see what's going on. Oh, I've just got to specify it like this. Okay, now what's happening here. Well, I have this middle one backwards, but you'll kind of get the idea. So the middle dial is basically running around the circle every second. And the dial on the right is running around the circle every minute. So if you were to count those, it would take, well, if it was running at 60 frames per second, you could count it. But that middle dial would spin 60 times around in a second, and then, I mean, in a minute, and then this would, and the dial on the right would take one minute to go around. And the one on the left is in one hundredth of a second. So it's really moving around like this. All right, so in order to specify these, you know, if, you, if you're just doing traditional animation, you, you know, you might, as a traditional animator, you might just say, okay, I'll go in and I'll use a keyframe and I'll rotate it so many frames. Well, that's not really the way we want to work. What we want to do is we want to use... Uh, physics in order to take advantage of it. So to specify say this middle dial rotation where it's going around the circle once every second imagine a particle here so in one second it goes all the way around the circle to here so it's basically gone 6.28 radians in one second okay so that's really the same as the angular velocity it's 6.28 radians per second and that's how you specify angular velocity. In this case, it's constant. It's not accelerating. So it's a velocity term, not an acceleration term. And so when I created this object, I gave it an angular velocity of 6.28 radians per second. And then every second it goes, it starts here, and every second it goes all the way around the circle. And that's the specification of angular velocity. And then, of course, I divided the time up for doing it in seconds, and then it I mean in minutes and then also I changed it to do it in hundreds of seconds I just scaled the amount of rotation around the circle but that's a really cool skill because for instance like maybe in my tornado simulator that I'm working on I'm working on a helicopter blade and perhaps you've always wondered how fast a helicopter blade is running around the circle well that's actually based on the radial distance as well because if uh, if this was part of the helicopter blade and this was part of the helicopter blade, well they're still moving at the same constant angular velocity as it's going around the circle, but this one's moving a much greater distance. So this ends up this term over here is going to actually ha be a linear velocity. You have a line that's tangent to this point right here and it's a vector that's always tangent to the circle, but yet it's going to be a longer vector because it's 
moving at a greater speed, but that's how you actually calculate the linear velocity is from your angular velocity term. All right, so it kind of gives you an idea, and I'm just kind of giving you a heads up as to where we're heading with all this stuff. But that's how I'm able to create this clock, and it is a clock. It actually works as a clock. But I'll I'll do some cooler clocks that do other cool things. I kind of just wanted to point it out and let you kind of give it some thought, instead of just radians being just some arbitrary extra way to specify, you know, an angle of measurement. Because then you might wonder, well, why can't we just use degrees? Well, this is another way. You've seen how we did it with you know, calculating the area of a sector or the length along the circular arc like this, but this is another one specifying the angular velocity of a particle. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.